Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to News Dose and of course the Game Awards finally took place last night and after months and months of hype for this event, was it worth it? Was it actually good? And well, I do think that there was some really cool and good announcements at this event and whenever they found the time, you know, there was select moments that they found some time to give out some awards at, you know, the Game Awards show. But, uh, you know, that's kind of where this event uh, really fell short for me is that once again, and this is this is something that I've said with Jeff Keighley events in the past, it was excruciatingly long. You're talking about an event that was three and a half hours. And when you actually look at the announcements, you have to wonder, did it really need to be three and a half hours? because I'm not entirely sure about that. It just feels like Jeff Keighley's events tends to be more of a big advertisement. These companies are obviously paying him money to advertise their games because the Game Awards gets a lot of views. And what was the most shocking thing about this particular event is that Nintendo completely skipped out in this event. PlayStation didn't really have a big showing either. And then you had Xbox, which I was hoping that they would have done a little bit more, but they did at least show one of their big games, which we of course will talk about here in a little bit. Truthfully, they might have revealed the best game visually to date for these next generation consoles being, of course, the Xbox Series X. So I was very impressed by that and we will talk about that later in the video as well as some other highlights during the Game Awards. Now, we also do have some other things happening outside of the Game Awards as well, so make sure to stay tuned for all of that. The first thing, though, that we are going to talk about today, though, is the actual awards that was given out here. This is something that I really think that Jeff Keighley needs to improve on because I feel like these creators, you know, this is what the show is supposed to be about, but they didn't really have time to talk about their awards. They they should have more than 10 to 30 seconds before they get booted off stage so we can watch another 10 minutes of advertisements. We need to at least disguise this event just a little bit and actually focus on what it's supposed to be about. but. Uh, I, I guess it is what it is. Nonetheless, uh, there is actually three specific awards that I do want to talk about. The first of which is the Game of the Year. Now, I personally really liked all six nominations this year. I think all these are excellent games in their own right. But I was really happy with the outcome this year as it takes to one, the Game of the Year. Now, if you've been following this channel for a while now, you probably will remember early in the year, I consistently said that this was my Game of the Year. And that was the case up until Psychonauts 2 released. Both of these games are 3D platformers, they shine light on creativity, they have good stories, they have a good art style, and really I would have been happy with either one of these games winning, so yeah, I'm thrilled to see It Takes Two win, and really if you haven't played this game already, please go do so. This legitimately is probably the most creative game that I have ever played, and I love seeing creativity win in the year of 2021. Now, another award that was given away is the Player's Voice Award, and this is where the community votes on their favorite game of the year. And well, the winner here was actually Halo Infinite. And this one is a really interesting one because most of the voting was actually done before its official release. And that has created somewhat of a, a, a debate on should it have even been included. I've kind of talked about this already, but people's been playing Halo Infinite since last month. It's not like this game was unplayable. A lot of the votes are being based off of its multiplayer, and, well, its multiplayer is absolutely excellent. It really is one of the best competitive multiplayer games that I have played in a very, very long time, and truthfully, I can't put this game down. And even then, the single player, now that it's out, well, guess what? It's actually really good as well. So, yeah, I don't think that there should be much of a debate here. Halo Infinite is just a really good game, and I think it's well-deserving of the Player's Voice Award. Now, the one other award that I want to talk about is the Art Direction. And the reason I'm talking about this one because I was kind of baffled as to why this one won, but it actually went to Deathloop. Now, listen here. Deathloop is a great game, and I'm not trying to take anything away from it. I think that Arcane did an excellent job with this game. It's got an interesting story. It's got fun gameplay. And, well, its art direction is pretty interesting and unique as well. But just for a moment here, let's actually take a look at the nominations for the best art direction. You have The Artful Escape, Deathloop, Kena Bridge of Spirits, Psychonauts 2, and then Ratchet and Clank 
ripped apart. Yeah, I really don't know how Deathloop 1 over Kena Bridge of Spirits, Ratchet and Clank ripped apart, and Psychonauts 2, which are all widely recognized for their art style. Now, maybe I'm crazy or something, I just don't see it, and let me know in the comments below if that's the case, but let me know what you all think should have gotten the Best Art Direction Award. Either way, though, big congrats to everybody who got nominated last night, and big congrats to everybody who got an award last night. It was well-deserved, and just thank you so much to the game industry for continuing to bring joy throughout the world. Moving on, though, let's go and talk about some different highlights that was at this event, and we have got to start off with Hellblade 2. Just wow. This was absolutely stunning, and quite frankly, it was mind-blowing. And the reason I say this is because this is a gameplay trailer of Hellblade 2, and it looks so realistic that I didn't even realize it was gameplay at first. Jeff Keighley kind of led up to this trailer by saying that it was gameplay, and I, when I first started watching it, I, I thought it was a cinematic. I was like, just kind of waiting around, like, well, where's the gameplay? And then it just kind of dawned on me. I was like, whoa, wait, hang on. This is actually gameplay here. I, I, I was blown away when I started to realize that. And I mean, if you've played the first Hellblade game, you know how this game works. It is a very cinematic experience and you can automatically start hearing the voices in this trailer that's talking to her. And, and that was something else about this trailer. It wasn't that it was just a good looking game visually, but it's also very powerful in terms of its storytelling. It immediately hooked me and I want to know what's going on. I want to know more. Now I've said on this channel several times that I do believe that the original Hellblade is one of the best story driven games that released last generation and you can definitely see that here with Hellblade 2. This once again looks like a very cinematic experience. It looks amazing visually. The actress Melina Jorgens, she does an excellent job and because those facial animations are so realistic, it absorbs you into the game and with its storytelling, yeah, I cannot wait for this game. I think this is truly going to be a special and groundbreaking game with both its graphics as well as its storytelling. Now, we are going to have to wait a little bit longer before we actually get to play this game, though, as it is set to release sometime in 2023, which actually makes this whole showcase even more crazy because this is actually early footage. There's a good chance that this game looks even better when it releases on the Xbox Series X in 2023. Now, we do have some other highlights to talk about as well, including Alan Wake 2. Yes, finally, Alan Wake 2 is a thing after we've waited for, oh no, I don't even know how long it's been since we got that original one, but it came out for the Xbox 360. The, the good news about this one is that it will be enjoyed by everybody as it is multi-platform. This one will be available on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. We have talked about this before because some leaks in the past, so this shouldn't be overly surprising, but at the same time, I know that there's been rumors circulating that this could possibly be a PlayStation exclusive, but no, here it is. It is a multi-platform game. Interestingly enough, though, it seems like they're taking a different direction with Alan Wake 2 as they're describing this as a survival horror game. Now, technically, the first game did have some survival horror elements to it, but this one apparently is going to push that to the max. This is a legitimate survival horror game this time. So that is going to be really, really interesting. I think it's actually kind of exciting personally. We've never really seen Remedy Entertainment make a survival horror game before, but because they're excellent storytelling and they know how to make good, fun games as well, they can make a really good survival horror here that really sticks out within this genre. The release date, though, however, is set for a 2023 release, so we're going to have to wait a little while longer before we get to play this one ourselves, but the good news is that apparently we will hear more about this game in summer of 2022, barring any kind of delays. Another game that showed up here would be Sonic Frontiers. We did actually know that this was going to be at the Game Awards, though unfortunately, we still do not have gameplay of this game. However, it does appear that those rumors were true after all. This game does look to be inspired by Zelda Breath of the Wild. This is a big open world Sonic game, which again, this is quite the departure for the Sonic franchise. Now, we're still going to have to wait and see how this one turns out per se. I think that they could do some interesting things with an open world Sonic game, but because this franchise has been so inconsistent with those 3D Sonic games, I want to see more before I just fully commit to this just being a great change up. I'm really, really hoping for the best with this game. And if anything, the world itself does look really good. So I'm excited to see gameplay hopefully sometime here soon. 
And even though they didn't show any gameplay of Sonic Frontiers, they however did show some gameplay of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. And truthfully, previously, I wasn't really interested in this game at all. But now that we've seen some gameplay of this over at the Game Awards, this game looks like a lot of fun. There seems to be a lot of things happening here with all of the different gameplay mechanics based off the character that you play as in this game. And the story seems pretty interesting as well. I think the visuals look nice. I, I thought it had a pretty good sense of humor. Really, in terms of gameplay, I think that Suicide Squad actually looks quite excellent. I shouldn't be overly surprised by this or anything, considering Rocksteady is the developer working on this game. They did a great job with the Batman Arkham games. But yeah, I left last night very impressed with Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Now, the good news is that this one is a 2022 release, so we will get to play this one next year. Again, barring any kind of delays, which is pretty common in the game industry anymore. And this does appear to be a next generation exclusive releasing on the Xbox Series, PlayStation 5, and PC. Speaking of next generation exclusives, we do need to talk about the PlayStation 5 as they did talk about a few of their upcoming exclusives being Forspoken and Horizon Forbidden West. Now, truthfully, I was really surprised that PlayStation did not have a bigger presence at the Game Awards here, but still, we did get an update for both Forspoken as well as Horizon Forbidden West. Horizon Forbidden West, they basically just kind of showed some of the different machines that you'll be fighting in in that game. This game continues to look gorgeous and look Looks like a lot of fun and it does seem like they improved the melee driven combat in this game so it, i mean if you like the first horizon game yeah this game is looking excellent now as for forspoken this one's actually coming from luminous studios over at square enix the same studio that worked on final fantasy 15. now i personally really liked final fantasy 15 so forspoken is a game that i've been keeping an eye on for a little while now this game once again looks gorgeous with that art style it looks flashy and the combat is very reminiscent of games like final fantasy 15 and kingdom hearts 3. I also like the idea of this being about a protagonist that was set in the modern world times, but then was pulled into this different world and then has to take the role of a hero. No, it's not necessarily the most original idea in the world as you've seen this type of stuff in movies, but you don't really see this in games per se. So I want to see how this game for Spoken plays out. And again, we got some good news because it did get an official release date. Forspoken is now set to arrive on May 24th of 2022 on the PlayStation 5 as well as the PC. Now, one last highlight that we're briefly going to discuss for the Game Awards would be The Matrix Awakens. This is a playable Unreal Engine 5 demo that you can download right now on the Xbox Series and the PlayStation 5. And wow, does this one look extraordinary. Yeah, we were talking about Hellblade 2 earlier and how good that game looks, but we also can say the same here when it comes to The Matrix Awakens. This apparently was developed in partnership with Epic Games and The Coalition, which works on games like Gears 5. For a while now we've kind of known that they are extraordinary when it comes to the Unreal Engine and they're proving it once again here with the Matrix Awakens. The thing is though is I've seen certain people out there kind of say where are these next generation only experiences that aren't possible on older hardware and yeah I think with demos like this and you're seeing Hellblade 2 here we're definitely heading in that direction. If you do want to check out this demo yourself though again you can download it right now. Let's go ahead and quickly talk about some different things that happen outside of the Game Awards, though, and the first of which is actually about Nintendo. I was actually shocked that they did not show up at the Game Awards this year. I was expecting some kind of presence from them. There were some rumors going around that maybe a game like Xenoblade 3 could show up here, but they didn't show that or really anything else outside of a montage trailer. But for you Nintendo fans, they did actually announce something after the event being Banjo-Kazooie for Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack. We actually already knew this was coming to the service, but now we do have a release window for this game set for January of next month. And this is actually a really cool moment in history because Banjo-Kazooie is a big part of Nintendo's history with the Nintendo 64. This was one of the best Nintendo 64 games, and to this day, I do believe it is one of the best 3D collectathon platformers of all time. But of course, Xbox acquired Rare, and even though Rare and Nintendo had a really good relationship, that was, for the most part, the end of their relationship. But now here we are all these years later, and Xbox and Nintendo, they're very buddy-buddy, and they did allow Banjo-Kazooie being such a big part of Nintendo's history 
to come over to Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack. So this is really cool, and if you haven't played this game already, I would highly recommend it. And hopefully, this is just the beginning of Banjo-Kazooie's big comeback. We do have one more topic to go over today though, but because this video is getting a little long by this point, I want to make this one real, real quick, and that is that the Analog Pocket will be up for pre-order once again on December 14th. The Analog Pocket is really a gorgeous and coveted device that can play Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games at higher resolutions. It's got a sleep mode to it. You can connect this thing to a dock and play it on your TV, and it really looks extraordinary. Analog typically does a good job with their hardware in general, but this has been a console that's been very difficult to get a hold of. Pre-order sold out insanely fast last time that they put this thing out, but the good news is that pre-orders will be going live again December 14th, and they did make a few changes this time. They did say it is our goal for everyone who wants a pocket to be able to secure an order. To accomplish this in the context of a global pandemic, we are implementing a fulfillment protocol. Fulfillment groups will be assigned on a first-come, first-served basis. Group A, quarter 1, 2022. Group B, quarter 4, 2022. Group C, 2023. So it does sound like this might be a little bit easier to get a hold of this time, though the price is higher set at $220. This is not a cheap device by any means, but if it's as good as it looks, it will be well worth it. Let's go and take a look at the poll of the day, though, where I asked you all, what letter grade would you give the Game Awards 2021? And as you can see here, 11% of you gave it an A, 30% of you gave it a B, 38% of you gave it a C, 9% a D, and then 13% of you gave it an F. Now, an F seems to be a little harsh for me. I'm probably going to go into group with a B here as well. I think that this was a good overall event i have a big problem with how long jeff Keeley makes his events but i still felt like it was a good event there was a lot of interesting games here and i i, I couldn't even go over all of the interesting games that was talked about here i mean i mean games like space marines was here you had that new Boca game slitterhead there was Gollum: the untold story there was sonic frontiers you had cuphead the delicious last course silent hills was teased once again there was the new plague tell game which looks excellent by the way crossfire x got a release date for february 10th Tunic got a release date as well for March 16th, and there was Star Wars Eclipse made by Quantic Dream. So yeah, I think that there was a lot of good game announcements here. It's just, I feel like Jeff Keighley, he just makes his events too long. They don't need to be three and a half hours. You have to respect the time of your audience as well. So that's kind of my big problem with it. If he could just tone that back down a little bit, then I would probably give it an A, but because it's so long, I'm gonna have to give it a B myself. Anyways, though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to put notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.